Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You're welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be in church, shout hallelujah. Amen. We welcome you to church. Those watching us from home, those in the presence of the in the presence of God this morning. We just want to give God praise. I want us to rise up on our feet as we give God praise this morning. Let's give him more than a song. Because our God is a mighty God. We want to worship the Lamb of Glory. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. We want to give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Worship the Lamb. We will worship the Lamb of Glory. We will worship the
love you, Jesus. We bring you more than a song. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Just tell Jesus, say, I love you, Lord. Just lift up your hands and just worship him. We give him praise. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we want to love you. We want to bring you more than a song this morning. We bring you our love. We bring you our hearts, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. When the music fades and all is slipped away, and I simply come, oh, oh, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required oh my Jesus. you such much deeper within through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. Oh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, for it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm so
your hands and say, Jesus, it's all about you. It's not about the circumstance. It's not about the situation that I'm into. But it's all about you, Jesus. Give him your worship. Give him your whole self. Because he's the only one. He's God by himself. It's all about him. He's God by himself. He's God by himself. He doesn't seek the opinion of your doctors to heal you. He's God by himself. He's God by himself. It's all about him. It's all about his power. It's all about his might. It's all about him, Jesus. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One, I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One. I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Age to age, you're still the same. All creation, they shout your name. For you are God all by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You are God all by yourself. Jesus. For who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. For you are God.
You're still the same. Oh, creation. Oh, creation. Shout your name. Oh, we'll shout your name. For you are God of
in preparing our hearts to give, there are four easy ways that you can share your contribution with this ministry. You can give online at bramleycog.org. You can send an e-transfer to the email address located at the top right corner of your screen. You can give in person, or you can send us a check in the mail to the address on the screen. Thank you for your kindness and... Come and worship somebody. We worship him that sits upon the throne. Father, you are great. You are marvelous. You are wonderful. Oh, we honor you. 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 Father, we honor you. Father, we honor you. We honor you. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. My God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Who is like unto our God? There is not another God like our God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, we give you thanks, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. My God, we give you thanks. Come on, everybody. Let's feel the same. All creation, all creation. We give him thanks. We shout your name. You are God of fire. Yes, yes. Give him thanks. You're still the same. All yes. creation. In no creation. We shout your name. We we'll shout your yes. name. Yes. Oh, you, you are God of yourself. Yes. You are God of yourself. Oh, sing H2A. Yes. You're still the same. All creation, and all creation. Oh shout God. your name. We oh shout your name. You are God of your Give him a hand. We give him thanks. Father, we honor you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we celebrate you. Oh, we honor you. We honor you. Amen. You may have your seats, please. I want to give God thanks for those of you that are in the house today and those of you that are watching us by television or whatever smart device you have. We give God thanks. He's a great God. Amen, somebody. He's a, he's a powerful God. He's God all by himself. He, he's the God that is more than able. He's a powerful God. Amen, somebody. And we're so glad that we can be here today. I'm so glad to see many of you that I haven't seen for a while. I'm so glad to see Joel's friend, Lewis, and his friend, or is it your sister? I don't know. God bless you, whatever. Amen. God bless you. All the other guests and those of you that are at the back. God, come on. Let's give them a great hand. God is a good God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. One of my daughters went to a restaurant last night. And it was difficult to, to, to find a seat in a restaurant. It was so packed. If folks can be motivated to go eat food, I believe the people of God should be more motivated to come to the house of God. I was glad when, when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. If they can do that, you and I should be more motivated to be in church, to be in the presence of God. Especially if you say you love Jesus. Amen, somebody. God is good. Amen, somebody. I am so glad that you're here. Amen. We want to get ready to partake 
at the Lord's table. And, and we want to believe God to, to touch our bodies, touch our spirit, touch our souls, touch us in spirit, soul, and body. Sister Ronke, God bless you. I haven't seen you for a long time. Come on, let's give God thanks for Sister Ronke. Amen. God is good. Amen. I hope I haven't missed anybody. Amen. I, as we partake today, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what that sickness is. I don't know what, what challenge you might be going through. I, but I want to encourage you to, as we, as we partake at the Lord's table, ask God to touch you. How many of you could do with a supernatural touch from God? You see, there are some things only God can fix. Amen. There, there are some things only God can correct. And as, as, as they call this meal, the meal that heals. I've heard of cases where people were partaking of the Lord's table, where the power of God flowed through their bodies and, and touched that chronic sickness, that chronic disease, and, and, and healed them. You know, just now when I came to this pulpit, to this podium. I was kind of a scene, a kind of a smoke in this house. And I, I, I'm saying, I wonder if it's my eyes, you know. You know, I don't know what it is, but whether it's the smoke of God or whether it's my eyes, <laughs> I, want the, the, I want the smoke and the healing power of God to flow through this house when we partake today. Come on, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God can heal your eyes if it's an eye problem. Come on, somebody. Whatever it is, we want the healing power of God to flow. How many of you would agree with me? Say, healing power of God, flow in this house today. Come on, say it one more time. Healing power of God, flow in this house today. And touch my body. Touch every organ in my being. Touch me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. In Jesus' powerful name. Amen. The word of God tells us to let a man examine himself, then let him eat. Why not? Let's, let's just take a, uh, just a few moments and say, God, search me. Search me. Search me, God. Search me. Search us as a church. Spirit of God, if there's anything in us, if there's anything in me that is unlike you, I ask that you'll take the powerful blood of your son. Take the cleansing blood of Jesus and, and wash us and, and wash me and, and make me clean. Amen. Just ask God to wash you afresh, to, to remove every sin that you might have committed. Ask him to wash your mind, to wash your eyes, to wash, wash your thoughts, wash your imaginations, to wash you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Wash us, we pray. Sanctify us, we pray. Make us clean, make us clean. And Spirit of God, as we partake today, we pray that the healing anointing of God. We pray that the stripes of Jesus will, will come alive in our bodies because your word said by his stripes we are healed. Oh God, let the, the fruits of the stripes and the benefits of the stripes of Jesus, let, let it come alive in our beings and, and let the power of God flow right now and touch us, we pray. In Jesus' name. want us to get ready to partake. I want those of you that are at home to get your emblems ready. Let's get ready to partake at the Lord's table. Amen. Scripture said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. 
this do in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. And after the same manner, manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye. As often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. Oh God. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you. We honor you. Touch us afresh, we pray. Touch us afresh, we pray. Touch those that are watching us today. Those at home. Touch those that are in this house today. God, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. I appreciate you being here today. Amen. I want to continue our focus on the subject, the, the power of wisdom. And I don't believe that we will necessarily conclude the subject today. I know we're going to get Sister Agnes and some others maybe to, to talk to us about the power of wisdom. Amen, somebody. Let me just remind those of you that are in this house and those that are watching us today. Wisdom is more powerful than you and I realize. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. Wisdom is more powerful than you and I realize. Especially God's supernatural wisdom. Or, or wisdom acquired through revelation knowledge. Come on. Amen. And before we conclude this service today, I, I want to show you how to get wisdom. And yet we're going to go back and we're going to still talk about the power of wisdom. Amen, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. But let me just briefly recap from, from last Sunday service. Proverbs 4 and verse 7. It says wisdom is the principal thing. The main thing. I know bro brother uh, um, Eric loved to say it's the main thing. Brother Eric, it's the main thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And, it, and with all you're getting, get understanding. I think we can turn on the heat there a little if we haven't. Th thank you so very much. It's hot in here. Amen. Praise God. The, the New Living Translation says, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Tell somebody, getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Amen. Getting wisdom, Sister Bola, is the wisest thing you can do. I like how the New Century Bible puts it. It says, wisdom is most important, is the most important thing. So get wisdom. It is the most important thing. So get wisdom. Tell somebody wisdom is the most important thing. So get wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is so powerful that the Bible tells us in, in, the, in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 18. In the uh, ERV translation, it says, wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one fool can destroy much good. Amen. Tell somebody wisdom is better than weapons of war. 
What's going on in our world today? With all the, 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 the great uh, the, the, the weapons that the, the Russian army has. The scripture tells me that wisdom is better than weapons of war. What, are, what the leaders of our world need in this season is wisdom. Wisdom what to do. Wisdom how to do it. Wisdom when to do it. Wisdom where to do it. Wisdom who to do it. Because wisdom is better than tanks and, and guns and, and nuclear weapons. Wisdom is more powerful than that. Amen. But one fool can destroy much good. Wisdom is so powerful that the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 16. That wisdom is better than strength. Let, let, let's read it. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 14 to 16. Just go, go, just go there with me. Uh, the king, Yes, King James. Great. You're doing a great job. It says there was a little city. And few men within it. And there came a great king against it. And besieged it. And built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor a wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. He by his wisdom delivered the city. Amen somebody. Wisdom is so powerful that by it you can bring deliverance to a nation, city, company, or family. From any dire situation or problem. That's worth repeating. Brother Akin, wisdom is so powerful that by it you can bring deliverance to a nation, city, company, or family from any dire situation or problem. Wisdom. The Bible says that the city that was besieged by this great king was delivered through the poor man's wisdom. Not through their ability to fight or weapons of war. Come on. Wisdom will deliver you from difficult and dire situations. Tell somebody wisdom will deliver you from difficult and dire situations. Wisdom is so powerful that it will be a defense for you. Or said differently, it will protect you. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 12 says, Wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. What is wisdom? Or how is wisdom defined? There are several definitions for the word wisdom, but, they, are, but they, they all carry the same message and meaning. Wisdom is the ability to discern inequalities and relationships. Not every relationship is the same. Amen, somebody. In fact, not every relationship is worth fighting for. Come on, somebody. Different levels of relationship. Amen. Wisdom is the ability to discern inequalities and relationships, insights, good sense, judgment, the ability to discern or judge what is true, right or lasting, insight, common sense. Somebody said common sense isn't so common now. Because a lot of people don't even have it. Amen. Wisdom is the capacity to have foreknowledge of something. Amen. To know the consequences. Both positive and negative. Of all available course of actions. And yield or take the options with the most advantage. Either for present or future implications. Wisdom. Wisdom helps you to have foresight. 
and insight. And you know what to do. You see, wisdom is knowledge, as we would say in a nutshell, rightly applied. Amen. You see, you can have knowledge, but you can apply it in the wrong way. I've known of teachers, they're brilliant, but they can't teach. And they can't teach well. Amen, somebody. Wisdom is knowing what, how, when, where, who. When you know what to do or how to do it. When you, when, when, when to, let me read that again. When you know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, and who to do it. Then that makes you a very powerful person. Amen. Come on. Amen. When you know what to do. And you know how to do it. Amen. When to do it. Where to do it. And who to do it. Then that makes you a powerful person. I was thinking about brother Nathan when I documented this. Amen. 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 Can you imagine we're, we're in a building program. We're, we believe in God to build a church complex. But can you imagine if brother Nathan knows what to do? He knows what we want. We all know what to do. When to do it. In fact, how to do it. When to do it. Where to do it. And who to do it. That will make him a real powerful man. Amen, somebody. Because he knows how he can solve the problem. How we need more people in this house with wisdom. You see, many of us know what we want. But our problem is that we don't know how to get it. And sometimes we know how, but we don't know when or where. How we need wisdom. Amen. When, when, when you know what to do and how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, and who to do it, that makes you a very powerful person. And you can be a great asset to society and to the kingdom of God. Amen. Because of your wisdom. You know what to do. You know how to do it. When to do it. Where to do it. And who to do it. Amen somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. One of the problems we have. In today's, in today's society. Is such a lack of wisdom. Amen. Such a lack of wisdom. When, when you and I have this powerful ingredient called wisdom. Will cause you and I to know what to do in a given situation. Come on, somebody. It will cause us to know how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, and who to do it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you would like to have this powerful ingredient or more of this powerful ingredient called wisdom? One man said, nobody has a money problem. It's a wisdom problem. Amen. He said, nobody has a marriage problem. He said, it's a wisdom problem. You, because you don't know how to solve your financial or your mortal problem. Amen. If you did, you would have done it. Come on, somebody. But the problem is, you and I lack wisdom. That's why the Bible tells us, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it liberally and abrade it not. Amen, somebody. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Let him ask in faith, believing. For he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Wisdom is more powerful, folks, than many of us realize. If we did, we will pursue wisdom more. 
If we realize how powerful wisdom is, we will pursue wisdom more. Amen. I believe Solomon had a revelation of how powerful wisdom is. Or or how wisdom was. He's dead, right? Amen. Amen. He realized the importance of, of wisdom and knowledge in order to lead God's people. He, he, he knew the importance or, or how powerful wisdom was if he's going to be a success in life. That's why he, he, he made asking God for wisdom and knowledge a priority to perform the great task of leading God's people. Yeah, different, one, different ones, but okay, let's read that one. It says, in the night, and in the night, God appeared unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Thank you, brother Toby. Go on. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let the promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people. For who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked for riches, wealth, or honor, nor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have, that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee. Amen, somebody. Amen. Wisdom. Solomon made asking God for wisdom priority. Amen, somebody. Let me get back to my notes here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wisdom. Wisdom. You see, I believe he had a revelation of how powerful wisdom was or wisdom is. Amen, somebody. That's why he made it a priority. That's why he made asking for wisdom a, a, a priority. I, I want to you know, with the time that we have. I, I want to give you at least six ways how you can get wisdom. And I'll see how fast I can, I can do that. Number one. How many of you want more wisdom? Let me just double check. Amen, somebody. Amen, Sister Charmaine. We need more of it. Amen. Number one. Through reverential fear of God. Through rever reverential fear of God. You see, there are many of God's people who have, who, who have no reverential fear of God. Amen. They, 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 they walk and, and live in disobedience to God and his word. They, they know what God wants them to do and, and requires of them. But they, they, but they purpose in their hearts to do whatever they want. To do whatever they want to do. Amen somebody. They got church folks like that. They, they serve God. However they want to serve him. And, and not what God require of them. Like Cain did. They have no reverential fear for God. How many of you know folks like that? You run into people like that in your, in your, in your lifetime. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and verse 6, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Tell somebody by the fear of the Lord. Men depart from evil. When, when you have a reverential fear for God, you will stay away from that which is wrong before him. Come on. Amen. You, and you'll do that which is right in God's sight. Because you fear him. Because you have a reverential fear for him. Then God will begin to teach you his wisdom. Amen. Somebody. Proverbs 9 and verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning. Of wisdom. When you start fearing God, now God is going to begin to teach you wisdom. How many of you still want more wisdom? Amen. Somebody, fear God. Proverbs 15 and verse 33 in the New Living Translation it says, Fear the Lord. Fear, sorry, fear of the Lord. Teach his wisdom, humility, and power. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes honor. Amen. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility precedes honor. When you have a reverential fear for God, God will begin to teach you his wisdom. Amen. Amen. The second way to get wisdom is through studies and experience. How many of you think you're wiser now than, when you, than what you were 10, 20 years ago? Some of you are married now. How many of you think you, you've learned some things? Amen. You're wiser. <laughs> Praise God. Sister Latoya said still learning. But you're wiser than, than, the, than that young lady that went into marriage. Right. Come on. Some. Sister Agnes, you're much wiser now. Praise God. You cannot, be able to, you cannot have uh, 30 years, 40 years of marriage and l not learn some things. Amen. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. True, true studies and experience. Study of the word of God. Study of, of, of good materials. Study in your field of education or career. You cannot do what you don't know. Come on somebody. And let me just remind folks. Ignorance is costly. Amen. You, you cannot do what you don't know. Amen somebody. Proverbs 10 and verse 14 says. Wise men. Lay up knowledge. Amen. Somebody. Wise men. Lay up knowledge. In other words. Wise men study. Wise men try to learn from their experiences. Wise men lay up knowledge. But the mouth of the foolish. Is, is near destruction. Different experiences in life can teach you wisdom. If you learn from the lessons being taught from them. Amen. You see, because there are some people, they, they will go through some things. Ever learning. Never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Going through experiences and still not learning. Different experiences in life can teach you wisdom if you learn from the lessons being taught from them. Amen. Praise God. Some people just take a long time to learn what God is trying to teach them. Amen, somebody. Psalms 119 and verse 71 in the New Living Translation, it says, My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your, to, to your decrees. Come on. My suffering was good for me. In other words, I learned from them. For it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Some people would go through difficulties and they still didn't get the message. They still keep marrying one fool after the other. Still keep dating one fool after the other. Amen somebody. What do you do with such persons? Amen. Amen. You can gain wisdom through studies and, and education and also through life experiences, both good and bad. Thirdly, you can get wisdom through association. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and verse 20, 
He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Tell somebody if you walk with wise people, you're going to get wisdom. If you walk with wise men, you shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You're becoming like the people you associate with more than you realize. Amen, somebody. The Passion Translation says, if you want to grow in wisdom, spend time with the wise. Tell somebody, if you want to grow in wisdom, spend time with the wise. If you, it goes on to say, walk with the wicked and you'll eventually become just like them. Amen. You are becoming like the people you are associating with more than you realize. And that can be good. And that can be bad. That can be a good thing. And that can be a bad thing. That's why you got to qualify every relationship. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you want to become wise, start associating with, with, with more people, with, with people that are more knowledgeable than you are and people that are wiser than you are. Amen. People that, that know what you don't know and you want to learn. Something will rub off on you. Tell somebody something will rub off on you. A transference of wisdom will take place over time. Somebody said, show me your company. And I'll tell you about your future. I'll show you your future. Let me say this to those of you in this house and those that are watching us today. No, rela no relationship leaves you the same. Come on. No relationship leaves you the same. Every relationship transfers you somewhere. Or transfer something into you. Amen. No relationship leaves you the same. Do you know some folks when they get married after a while. They start behaving like that man or that woman. I've, I've seen cases where, where, where the, there the man was stingy. And he, and he married this girl that was liberal. And after a while she started being stingy too. Both of them. A transference just took place. Uh, come on, uh, you, you guys have seen that, right? You, you become like who you marry unless you fight to maintain some level of, 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 of sanity and, 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 and some level of liberality. Or Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Every relationship transfers, transfers you somewhere or transfers something into you. If you associate with people that are wiser than you are, a transference will take place. How many of you don't mind such a transference? Amen, somebody. Fourthly, you can get wisdom through the laying on of hands by a man of God. And not everybody that call themselves a man of God is a man of God. Amen. You got to qualify them. You got to qualify them. It's like, it's like, um, I think it was the Syrophoenician woman that said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God that cometh by us regularly, regularly. She qualified him before she invested in him. Amen. Amen. You, you can get wisdom through the laying on of hands by a man of God. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. And Joshua the son of Nun, Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And a transference of the spirit of wisdom that was on Moses was transferred to Joshua. In fact, the authority... In the spirit that was on Moses' life was transferred to Joshua through the laying on of hands. And the Bible says, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Wisdom can be transferred or imparted to you when a man of God lays his hands upon you and pray over you. But you have to maintain it. 
through prayer. It can be transferred to you, but you can lose it over time. Come on, somebody. You have to maintain it through prayer and, and a godly lifestyle and staying in the word of God and remaining active in the ministry. As the saying goes, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Fifthly, we're going we're gonna to make it there, tech team. Fifthly, you can get wisdom through revelation knowledge or true revelation, revealed wisdom. The Bible gives us a good example of revelation, wisdom, and knowledge being received by David in 1 Chronicles 14, 8 to 16. It shows us how the Philistines came against David. And the scripture said, um, they came against David to battle. And the scripture said, and David inquired of the Lord. David asked God in 1 Chronicles uh, 14 verse 10 it says shall I go up against the Philistines and will thou deliver them into mine hands and the Lord said unto him go up for I will deliver them into thine hands amen what David received from the Lord was revelation knowledge that God was going to deliver them into the Philistines that God was going to deliver the Philistines into his hands then in verse 13 and 14, the Philistines yet again came against David and, and his army to battle. And David inquired again of God. And God said to David, go not up after them. Turn away from them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. Verse 15, it says, and it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of, of going in the top of the mulberry trees that that then thou shalt go out to battle. For God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. What David received here from God was revelation knowledge and revelation wisdom. Amen. What to do. How to do it. God gave him a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. Not all of God's knowledge or all of God's wisdom. Just a little portion. For the situation. How many of you can, can deal. Can, how, many of you, how many of you need God to give you a word of knowledge. Or a word of wisdom for your situation. Whatever you're going through. Revelation wisdom. Revelation knowledge. Amen. Praise God. And revelation knowledge. And, and revelation wisdom. They have a way of working together. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It tells you what to do. And how to do it. Amen. In Matthew 17, verse 24 and 20, 24 to 27, Jesus and, and, the, and the disciples came to Capernaum and they did not have money to pay their taxes. How many of you have ever been there? Where you can't pay all your bills the way you'd like to. There, they had such a situation. And Jesus said to Peter in verse 27, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Go thou to the sea and cast a hook and take up the fur, take up the, the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and, and give unto them for me and for thee. That was a, a word of knowledge. What to do. Where to go. Amen somebody. That was revelation wisdom. Revelation knowledge. And you're going to find a coin in, the fish's, in a fish mouth. Take it and pay the bill. How many of you would like God to, to, to direct you where to find that fish with the coin in its mouth? Figuratively speaking. Come on somebody. Amen. Praise God. Where, where God will just direct you what to do. So as to help you to pay your bills, what to invest in, what to buy. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Praise God. Let me move on, please. First Corinthians 12 and verse 8. One of the gifts of the Spirit is a word of wisdom. Amen. Praise God. It says, if you would go there, First Corinthians 12 and verse 8. Praise God. Maybe I'm going too fast for the operator behind. 
For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. They generally go together. When God gives you a word of wisdom on what to do and how to do it concerning a situation through revelation knowledge. That's what a word of knowledge and, and a word of wisdom is. He gives you a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom concerning the situation. And many times they go together. Amen. And lastly, you can get wisdom by asking God for wisdom. We've talked about this so much. The Bible says in James 1, 5 to 7. Let's go to the New Living Translation, please. Let's read it. If any man lack wisdom, ask. Ask of God. James 1, 5 to 7, the New Living Translation. It said, if, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. Tell somebody, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. Isn't that good news? If you need wisdom, ask our generous God. He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Go on. But when you ask him, be sure that your, that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with a divided loyalty is unsettled, as a, is, is unsettled as a wave of the sea and is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. If you lack wisdom, ask. Of God. Amen. Let me conclude by reminding you that wisdom is more powerful than you and I realize. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's the main thing. If you and I realize how powerful wisdom is. Brother Akin, we'll crave for more wisdom. We'll crave for wis more wisdom. I have not gone into all that I wanted to share yet. But we, we'll crave for more wisdom. That's why even the right of Proverbs encourages us to seek wisdom. Not just only ask for wisdom, but seek wisdom as you will seek for gold. Wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Wisdom will protect you. I just want to encourage those of you in this house and, and those that are watching us today, especially in the season that we're in. And many of you are believing God for breakthroughs. Many of you believe in God to do great things in your life. I want to encourage you to ask God for wisdom, to seek God for wisdom, to pursue wisdom like you have never done before. Make the seeking and the pursuit of wisdom priority. Let us all stand, please. In the name of Jesus. I believe God would not have me share on the subject of the power of wisdom if he did not want to give you wisdom. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, and if God is, is positioning you to get more wisdom, it's because God wants to do something great, something powerful in your life, in our lives, and in our church. Amen. How many of you would like God to do something very powerful in your life? Something very powerful, something outstanding. Just raise your hand if you're here. You, wanna, you want God to do something very powerful. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge those of you that are watching us today. Make it a habit to start asking God to give you wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you what to do. Because sometimes you know what you want. But you don't know how to get it. Amen. You, you, you know what you want, but you don't know how. You don't know when. You don't know where. You don't know who. But if you and I make it a habit of asking God for wisdom, he's going to give it to us liberally. Those of you that are believing God for a new level of wisdom, just raise your hand in this house. I want to pray with you. Those of you at home, you can do the same. Raise your hands where you are. I'm going to pray that God will give you wisdom like you've never had. God, your word said, if any of us lack wisdom, let us ask a generous God.
And God, there are hands that are lifted in this house right now. And, and, there, and there are people that are, that, that are lifting their hands at home. They're asking for wisdom. Oh God, if there's any time we needed wisdom is now. Holy Spirit, give us wisdom like we've never had. Wisdom to deal with the challenges of life. Wisdom to make major decisions, to, to make minor ones. Wisdom to pay all our bills and, oh no man, nothing but love. Oh God, wisdom to make major decisions concerning our future. Holy Spirit, we ask that you'll give us wisdom like we've never had. Oh God, you'll give us wisdom. You'll speak to our hearts. You'll speak to our spirit. You'll give us wisdom how to deal with difficult situations. How to solve our financial problems. How to solve mortal problems, how to solve our, our, our problems that, that concerns the family and, and sickness and, and disease and problems on the job. Give us wisdom like we've never had. Wisdom like we've never had. In the name of Jesus. If there are people in this house today and, 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 and those that are watching us, you, you, you want God to forgive you of every sin that you've committed. You, you want to surrender your life to Jesus today. I just want to lead you. I just want to direct you. I just want to position you so that you can experience God's forgiveness. If you would just pray this simple prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus. I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Forgive me of every sin I've committed. Oh God, wash me and cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I surrender my life to you today. Do something powerful in my life. Do something great in my life. Do something awesome in my life. Do something wonderful in my life. Oh God, do much more than I'm able to ask or think. In Jesus' powerful name. Amen. I believe God wants to give our people wisdom like we've never had. And I want you to receive wisdom. Amen. God bless you. And I want to encourage you to have a great day. And make sure you have a powerful week. Filled with God's wisdom. In Jesus name. Come on clap your hands everybody. Father we say thank you.